Okay, I think we're recording. Perfect. Okay. All right, can you guys see that? Yep. Sweet. Yep. Okay, so blank, blank scene, starting from scratch. A uh, couple things we need, right? We need to have somewhere on the screen for the timer to show, right? And then we need to have some sort of code behind the scenes that makes that timer go. Does that make sense? Can you guys still hear me? Uh, yeah. Okay. No, yeah. All right, so I am going to make a new UI with just text. And that will also create a canvas for my text to live on and an event system, which you can kind of ignore for now. Uh, so the canvas is like a blank stage for all the user uh, all the user interface elements to, to sit in. Uh, and then the one that we're looking at is just text here. So I'm going to quickly rename this to be timer text. And I am going to place it. Uh, where do you guys want it to be? Top left, top right, right in the middle? Um, probably top right. Top right? OK, yeah. so we can change the anchor here to be top right. And then we can position it relative to that. So I'm going to say like minus 100. And then so that'll sit up there. Uh, and I'll make the text a little bigger so we can see it. I think I have to make it wider. And I'm going to right align it. Let's sit up there. Okay, so we have that text going. Can you guys can see that okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that, so now that we've got that text there, it's just going to say new text for now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an empty game object. And I'm going to call this game object my game controller. And this is a common thing to do where you pull out the functionality that exists throughout the entire game into a separate object. Uh, and that's often called game controller, but can be whatever you want. Um, and within this game controller, it's just basically a spot for us to host the script that will that will control all that stuff. So I'm going to make a new script, and I'm going to call it game controller. And that will be attached to the game controller object. So will the will Unity just think that like that? game object is just stuck in the top right corner of the player's view the whole time and then display whatever the code is telling it to do, which is the counter. Um, so the, the, the script exists abstractly, like it doesn't exist anywhere, effectively. Oh, okay. um, the timer text will sit at that top right of the screen um, because we've anchored it. See uh, up here where it says top right? We've anchored it to the top right of the screen. So no matter how big that screen gets, it will anchor to that top right. Make sense? Um, so what we're going to do is with this script, we're going to make a connection to that text. And then once the game starts, then we'll change that text to reflect the time. So let's take a look at what this script looks like. Can you guys see this? Yep. OK, cool. So we have a game controller. First thing I'm going to do. Ah, uh, okay. Hold on. Let me do my whole screen. Okay, you can see that? Yep. Okay, so here is Unity, and here is my text editor. You can see that? Cool. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to namespace this. Uh, tutorial.
and format it. Okay, so just did a quick namespace. So we have, um, we're putting it in the right spot as we need to with our code. Now the first thing I wanna do is make a connection to that text, the on-screen text, so we can change it, okay? So in order to do that, we need to have a variable that will hold that connection to that text. So I am going to make a public text object, and I'm going to call it uh, screen timer. Now, this is going to throw an error once we get back to Unity. You guys see that error down there? Yeah. So on the console, it says this type or namespace text could not be found. So what that means is that it can't find the, uh, the type of object called text. Um, and this is simply because Unity by default abstracts out uh, the user interface to a separate package that we need to reference up here at the top. So instead of saying Unity Engine, we also need to say, uh, I think it's Unity Engine dot UI, if I remember correctly. Um, and hopefully this will make that error go away. Okay, good. So all that happened there was that by default, Unity Engine doesn't include the user interface stuff. So when I said text right here, uh, Unity didn't know what I was talking about. So I just needed to be really explicit by putting that in there. So maybe I'll put a comment in here. By default, uh, Unity doesn't find the UI components. Add this. Okay, so now we have a connection to the screen timer. So if I click on game controller up here, we've got a slot for a screen timer right here. You guys can see that? Yeah. Now I can very easily just drag that into there and call it good, it's now connected. Right? Yeah. Okay, so feel free to do that. The other thing that you can do is that if I remove this, we can do that step in code. Uh, and the way we do that in code is in the start function, we're going to say uh, screen timer equals game object dot find. And then what did we call it? We called it uh, timer text dot get component. Yeah, Text. So this will dynamically find the timer text object, which is this game timer find. Once it finds that object, it's going to get the text component from that object and put it into that screen timer variable. So when we go back to Unity and we hit play, this will hopefully fill in automatically with our timer text. that make sense? Yeah, it does. So either way, it's up to you. So if it's something that you know it needs to happen, you might want to do it in code. If it's something that uh, needs to dynamically change based upon level design, then you might want to leave it out and just have the designer drag and drop those components as needed. Okay. okay. So now that we've got that connected, let's just change the text real quick, just for testing. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say screen timer dot text equals hello world. So when this starts, it's going to change that text to be hello world. So let's see if that works. Good. Okay. So now we've got it changed. All right. So next comes the tricky bit. This is all relatively easy so far. Now we need to start the timer when the game starts and show that ongoing time. Uh, and there's two things that we need to do for this. We need to know when the game starts and we need to know how long it's been since the game has started. Um, so if we... Uh, hold on one sec. 
grab one of these. Could you do it to where, like, um, you code it so that it just keeps on checking how long it's been running for? Or do, does Unity not keep a timer? Oh, it keeps a timer. So could you not just, um, like, have it to keep on checking how long it's been going and refreshing the game object? Yeah, that's absolutely what yeah. we're going to do. Yeah. Okay, so time is this, uh, this class that Unity has, and it's got a bunch of different things about time. Um, so we can do time since level load. If you see this, this is this, the, the, the time the frame has started. This is the time in seconds since the last level has been loaded. Now this seems like a fairly good one to use because it's the time since the level was loaded, but this is actually not a great thing to use, principally because what Unity considers level, loading a level can change based upon the functionality that you have. Um, so there's actually a, a kind of easier, not easier, but not necessarily, but sort of better ways of getting the time. So what we are going to do is we are going to use time.time, .time, which is the beginning uh, this is the time in seconds since the start of the game, uh, which is a little bit better than when the level has loaded. So let's look at time.time. .time. So the time at the beginning of this frame, this is the time in seconds since the start of the game. Time is the amount of time in seconds the application has been re running for. It is read only. So we can effectively just use that. So time.time. .time. So in our update function, which is uh, the function that runs every frame, we can just say screen timer dot text like we did above equals, um, and I'm going to say uh, current time plus time dot time. Let me check real quick. Yeah, we might need to do this stuff. Let's just try. We might get an error because we might need to format that time. Okay, maybe not. Let's try it. Yeah. We're just getting that. So we are going to need to format that time. Uh, if we look at... The example right here, which is basically doing exactly what we are doing, um, you can see that it's got a time.time .time to string right here with F6. Um, and what that means is that it's going to format at two seconds, and I believe that's six decimal places. Um, so I'm just going to grab this whole thing and steal it, and let's see what happens. So I'm going to replace this time.time .time with this time.time .time to string F6. Mmm. Still not going. What am I doing wrong here? Let's just get rid of that and see what happens. There it is. Yeah, so there's six there's six decimal points. We don't necessarily need six decimal points. Let's do two. That's better. As, yeah. As, okay. Okay. I still want to put uh, current time up there. Huh. 
It was just too big. Okay, yeah. There we go. That's good, yeah. It's now what would we would do for because like um would we be in a habit to where like the timer stops and then it starts again once the player starts moving the s on like the second level yeah so that's where it gets a little bit trickier um especially if you've got um if you're loading up new levels uh yeah. and stuff like that so at the moment this works it's fairly rudimentary. Um, so what we're going to do instead is we're going to get a little bit more complicated um, with our code, if that's what you want to do. So what we can do is we can, instead of just dumping the time since the start of the game, we can make a new, uh, I think it's a float. Um, Let's call it game start. We're going to make a new variable called game start. And we are going to take the initial start of the game. And we're going to save that, right? And we're just going to hold on to that. Um, so I'm going to call that the basic method advanced method. Um, instead, what we're going to do is we are going to use the time.now function, uh, which if we go back to the time, where's time.now? We'll just use time.time, .time, I guess. Um, and we are going to say screen timer dot text equals current time plus time dot time, which is now, and we're going to subtract the game start time, right? Yeah. Actually, let's do this. Um, floats. Uh, we're going to we're just put in a variable so we can go here and say game current time dot to string So now, uh, is this going to work? Let's find out. OK, so that's working, right? So instead, um, Oh, I don't want to add a button. Let's do this. Oops. 
Okay, so what I did is that I just, uh, in, in order to simulate your game starting, I just put a boolean uh, oh, called yeah. is playing, and then if we check if it's playing, then it'll go. So, click on game controller here. We have an is playing one. So when I start, it won't change. And then when I click is playing, it should start at zero. It should start at zero. Let's see what happens. No, it didn't start at zero. Let's change this code. Something is not going right here. Oh, I know why. Because we need to know exactly when that checks. That's not a good way of doing it. Okay. How far into your game are, are, have you got? Um, Okay. Okay. The okay. The timer in its in its state before we started playing with like the start um, of the game, that would just time from when you start first level to when you end the game. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, it, it's so. What I'm asking is that if. Um, like, do you guys remember in the Mist game, there was that title card that came up that explained the game and then faded away and then you started playing? So I don't know if you guys want to have a similar thing where it basically might count down three, two, one, go, you know, and then the timer starts then. And that's not the start of the level. The start of the level is actually when it starts counting down from three to one. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if we, if we had that structure already set up, then this would be an easier thing for me to do because this, this Boolean thing is not, it's not working for what we need to do. Um, if, if there was an intro already, then... Yeah, then it, yeah, if that was set up, then we can just... Um, there's a couple different ways we can have things start at the end of an animation or start after a certain amount of time. Um, did you guys do co-routines with that or not? With the Mist game? I don't think you did, did you? Yeah, I don't think you did co-routines. Um, okay. Let's hold off on this for now. We can revisit having the timer go when the, when the actual gameplay starts as opposed to the level starting. Um, some other time. We effectively need to do this line here, line 19 when this boolean gets checked if we wanted to do that but that's a little bit too much of a drag to do in the time that we have um, so let's hold off on this advanced method for now uh, we can just use the basic method um, and that uh, you can at least get that started um, and then I will work on developing more of a robust timer that might be a little bit easier to put in does that sound all right Say that again? I can't hear you very well. Oh, sorry. Do I just need a comment out on the advanced method in the public? Uh, yeah. Just for now. Like, you don't need any of these lines. And I could put this code up on Discord right now, just in a pretty basic state. But this is hopefully enough to get you started. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop recording real quick.